<clears throat> Thank you, Alex. So I will call this uh, Board of Selectmen meeting to order March 15th at 7.01 p.m. Uh, I'm just gonna do a roll call since we're such a small uh, group tonight. Uh, Erica Blake. Jennifer Wing. Selectman Gill, you are on mute, I believe. Oh no, it says I'm not on mute. Oh, yeah. now I can hear you. Okay. okay. And then we have uh, town Administrator Crusoe. Perfect. <laughs> So let's uh, start with some announcements. Peter, what do you have for announcements here? Uh, just that Millville lost a great one. Margaret Carroll passed mm -hmm. away. Uh, you know, I'm sure by now many people know of that. Right. I was fortunate to meet her. She came to visit me very early on when I came to the town. And big hug, sweet lady, uh, clearly part of your uh, fabric of your Millville community. And I'm sure many people uh, will miss her passing. Um, so I have that. The other thing is uh, Mike Soder on his... Uh, SodaRep.com. He's uh, working on some, getting some Easter meals for folks. And uh, so I just, uh, you know, people can find out about that. It's a question whether it's a political thing. It's not really. He's really just providing the meals, but uh, he does a lot more for the town as well. So I just point that out. Yeah, he did that as well last year. Thanks. I just want to say an official uh, condolence to the Margaret Carroll family. Um, everybody, I think, in Millville knew Ma Margaret and how wonderful she was and everything she did for the town. So deepest condolences from a board of selectmen. So very sad to hear that news. 97 years young, I believe. Hmm. Still sharp as a tech. So. Uh, meeting minutes. I did not see any for March 1st. No, nothing available for March 1st. Uh, so, okay. Um, okay. Yep. We'll deal with that later on. Correspondence, I have none. Nope. Okay. Um, I assume there's no Board of Health update or representative here, but Peter, do you have an update from Board of Health that we need no, to know? No, just, that, just that, that I was fortunate to attend uh, uh, the, the Uxbridge this morning, a big meeting put on by the local, all of the politicians of the Blackstone Valley, and I guess they call it Lower Worcester Region. And uh, there's a Lower Worcester Regional uh, Vaccination Center that's going to uh, just been created in Uxbridge, a lot of hard work. Uh, principally by folks in Uxbridge, but also coordinated with uh, surrounding towns, boards of health and and in their uh, state reps and senators and Congressman McGovern from the federal office. Uh, he his uh, his representative was there. So they all uh, were all excited about it. Uh, folks to be able to get vaccinated there will have to still go through the state website, and make appointments. And that's challenging. Uh, will re continue to be challenging. Uh, and in addition, the supply of vaccines will continue to be limited. But nonetheless, as the supply grows, uh, presumably the availability through this regional site will be uh, improving as time goes on. It's set to open next week. It'll be open four days a week uh, from 8 to noon, I think they said, and then from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So people can uh, get appointments later in the day. Separately, there'll be a Saturday um, uh, vaccinations in Upton for the same group. Uh, people actually from anywhere in the state can sign up for vaccines there, but it is targeted for the local region. And, you know, again, um, many of their thanks that uh, I would say uh, are deserved to be made to uh, Representative Soder. I think he was one of the key proponents of this whole effort, Senator Fatman. Um, and also basically the leadership of Uxbridge, including uh, the town manager, Steve Setti, he really did a lot of the work to make this happen. So uh, they gave him a nice uh, plaque and you know, he did a fine job. Right, so that's at the um, old Uxbridge High School, correct? Yeah, uh, I have the name of it written down somewhere. Yeah, no. most people yeah. know it as old Uxbridge High School. Yes, yeah. Good, thank you for representing Millville today, Peter, appreciate that. Sure, I put on a tie and everything. It was great. There you go. Did you get Did you get a picture with anybody? <laughs> no, no, I avoided that. Thank you. Okay, yeah. good, good. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Anything else from Board of Health? Nope. Okay, so the next item is the uh, the election warrant. Um, yeah, so I, I don't I don't believe Diane's going to make it, but basically you've seen these before where you have to vote and approve the election warrant, then all. Uh, selectmen have to come into the office and sign seven copies of this so it can be posted right. 
throughout the town. Those copies are in the top drawer of that cabinet in the foyer. And what's the deadline on that, Peter? Because we all have to get in there. Well, the sooner the better. I think the deadline, she has to get it up. Uh, um, well, I don't know when she's going to get it up, actually. So I believe it's 14 days. Uh, Selectman Wang, you're usually better at this. Maybe seven days is when it has oh, to be seven? before okay. the time of the election. Yeah. I give myself seven, seven days, days cushion. So Seven days. Yep. So if we can all get in there and um, sign that um, this, this week. week, that would be good so they can yep. get those posted in a timely fashion. Yep. They're yep. already in the drawer. Um, yep. I've read through um, the poll. Um, the polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's on April 5th, St. Augustine's Church. Um, I don't think we're doing any early voting or anything like that since it's just a town election. Um, so, so we'll get in there and sign this this week. Um, let me see, do we have to vote on this one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'm looking for a motion um, for the election warrant to be signed by the selectmen. I moved. Looking for a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I, I said aye. I think oh. we did. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. I usually raise my hand too, so it's like the visual. Okay. Well. Um, so we'll uh, I'll get down there and sign that in the next day or two. That would be great. So we can get that out and posted. All right, so we have some new business here. Um, I know we had the appointment um, to the planning board at our last meeting and we had some clarification questions. Did that all get straightened out, Peter? It seems to yeah, be so he is a resident, he's on the voting rolls in Millville and so uh, an appropriate uh, person to appoint here. And this is the recommended appointee by the planning board for the board of selectmen to okay. appoint. Okay, so I'm looking for an emo a motion to appoint Preston Jeskovich to associate planning board member to June 30th, um, 2021. I will make a motion to appoint Preston Jeskovich at, as an associate planning board member through June 30th, 2021. Looking for a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Preston, for stepping up and filling this position. Peter sent out the um, preliminary budget, fiscal year 22. Um, Peter, I don't know if you wanna go through any points on that budget, anybody has any questions on that budget. I noticed that it's been changed slightly, not so much from our last meeting. Right, so right now what I'm sh showing is uh, about a $45,000 deficit based on revenue projections made in this model. And more importantly, the expense uh, you know, the budgets by department that were requested, most of which I've reviewed and provided recommendations uh, so far, but still su some are subject in the 2022 BOS recommended column. Um, I will note that that $45,000 deficit is at least going to change for the fact that I have new information on Tri-County's budget needs which will be favorable to the tune of about $25,000. And on the abatements, uh, I had modified that a little bit. I'm gonna modify it again to add 10,000, um, just to be sure we cover the tax work off uh, program in there. Mm -hmm. So the net would be just under $30,000 deficit as you see it here with still some items. And that's in the, my column, if you will. Right. BOS recommended column. Still some items to be scrubbed further. Um, and, you know, finance committee, I went through all uh, this in a similar level of detail as we went through the last meeting for some of the items that I had highlighted to you all, I highlighted to the finance committee. They're gonna start bringing in people um, on their next meeting is the 24th. So they'll invite department heads in, um, Selectmen are, are are welcome to attend. I don't know the, what what you know what the game plan is that the selectmen might want to choose between now and the time that uh, town meeting happens, um, mm -hmm. assuming it happens on May 10th, May tenth, right? Um, 
but so there'll be a new board uh, configured, presumably that will be voting final approval and so forth. But here's the opportunity for this board to review and weigh in and ask questions as you may wish. Um, like I say, there's some items that are, uh, you know, up uh, yet to be finally resolved. Uh, some of the key things, changes to the, you know, to this of note are uh, an increase in the town planner budget by the about ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars a slight increase in the town hall buildings repairs and maintenance by four thousand dollars basically to um you know try to keep ahead of uh, repair needs um the p police patrol officer and salaries is budgeted as uh as if staffing was there but if you look at actuals not full staffing has been uh been on the force so uh the cost has been less than budgeted but the positions remain there uh negotiations with the uh which we'll talk about later with the police union are mm -hmm. ongoing um there's uh the you'll see in the ask of the police department was uh or fire department was fire capital public safety equipment but that's a warrant article from the capital committee so it doesn't belong in this operating budget um You'll see that BVT, as we know from the meeting with uh, BVT, they're up about 32 grand. They have an additional student and uh, plus uh, increases. We do have a, a great benefit of uh, BMR's budget this year in terms of uh, what their needs are versus uh, what was uh, in essence allowed under the guidance. So their increase is shown here is only, is less than a percent and a half increase. Uh, yes, that was a very more, nice surprise this year. Yeah, it makes Thank you the BMR for, for working yeah. so hard on that. Yep. Norfolk Aggies up a student, so that's uh, up a you know 25 plus grand. Um, Tri County's going down, uh, so the, there's a 25 grand savings there. I've put in less than the highway surveyor has asked for, and in part because of the deficit we're dealing with and the lack of availability as of today's date of free cash to make that up. So any makeup to the extent there is, is going to have to come from, um, you know, a stabilization account, still the same population voting. Um, street lights is as if all lights go on and all are converted to the LEDs. So that's in this budget. Um, and so to the extent people want to weigh in, Council on Aging has an increase in their budget of, uh, you know, fairly substantial if you look at the base numbers, but it turns out in prior years, they used um, a foundation grant basically every year that they get to pay for a, a meaningful portion of the senior center director's salary. And uh, that's not what they're asking for this year. They're asking to have the salary come out of the operating budget. I understand the justification for that. It's also helped contribute to the van driver uh, costs as well that they've used that grant for. So they're hoping to use the grant for activity purposes as the grant is generally uh, intended. Um, what else? Uh, library is up um, by adding back the assistant librarian and some custodial services. So you see an increase there. Um, Debt service is down to the tune of 20 grand. The Worcester County retirement's up nearly 14%. That's a big increase uh, and is painful. Um, and it's, you could argue it's fixed. It's not like there's negotiation of that uh, amount. Um, try to capture health insurance to uh, provide for the participants uh, identified as well as uh, one additional participant family plan because, you know, personnel needs may change over time. Property and liability, we had a slight benefit on the um, cost of insurance for the old town hall, and that's reflected in here. So those are the major changes. Uh, people did a good job principally trying to follow guidance. Uh, again, as I say, the uh, police department um, is following guidance for the most part, certain items they you know, have contractual needs that uh, have had some increases, um, but the union negotiations continue. So that is a bit of an unknown 
as we sit today. I have a couple of comments and some questions. Um, for the schools, the Tri-Counties, the Norfolk Aggies, just keep in mind those can fluctuate up until basically the last minute. So That's we right. just want to keep that in mind. Unfortunately, yeah. there's not a real hard deadline with those. So those can surprise us sometimes in the end. Um, but those do reflect know. those do reflect latest information okay. from right. the schools. Okay. Right, right. But yeah. sometimes, and I'm not sure if the BVT acceptance letters letters have gone out yet. Sometimes right. if you have a child that doesn't get into BVT, they may now want to go to Tri-County or or right. Norfolk Aggie, and we know that that's quite a bit of money for the town of Millville. Indeed. So just keep yep. that in mind that that can swing us quite a bit. Yep. Um, what it what was included? Um, I have it in here somewhere, but I just wanted to make it clear to the um, towns people. What did we include for marijuana revenue? In so I budget? included um, an assumption of a million dollars of revenue, and we okay. get a community impact fee of three percent. So thirty thousand dollars in the fiscal year okay. of that. Uh, plus the three percent sales tax that the you know the town has adopted the local option on that so okay. sixty thousand dollars in total for fiscal twenty two they have mm -hmm. opened their doors they've commenced right. operations I can't speak to level of activity um, whether it's high low greater than expected or what um, but clearly the marketplace is getting saturated with you know sites opening in Blackstone sites you know in Oxbridge sites perhaps ultimately in Rhode Island. So it's not the, the be all and end all Nirvana cover all the needs of the town. Yeah, uh, I would make a recommendation to check in with um, over there and at the end after April closed month yeah. before you put the plug the numbers in to see where they are with the revenue if it's this is reasonable or not, whether right. what we have in our budgets reasonable or not, it might be a good just little check mark. To, um, yeah, no, I can really do that. I think we'll have two months of activity that will give in this fiscal year that right. will help uh, help us project even better. But I prefer to again be on the conservative side. Right. I, I've Absolutely. spoken to the owners. I, you know, I know what their break-even number is, and again, I've tried to be conservative. Right, definitely be conservative. I would agree with that. Yeah. And did you mention uh, FinCom is having a meeting on the twenty fourth to have budget? Uh, Departments, departments in. in that's correct so they'll have so, the major departments like police like fire like highway uh you know presumably they'll they're going to have library in they'll have council on aging you know those are the big hitters that they're likely yeah. to have in. so i think we as a board um if we choose to show up or not we should probably post a meeting for that night so if we go go there as a quorum and i also think it would be a very good idea for the new members that are on the ballot that are running for board of selectmen to show up at that meeting to hear what these departments have to say um it's more important that those people are there as well so if we can just post a meeting so if we have a quorum we can be legal beagle and like i said i, I would recommend the people that are desiring to be on the board of selectmen be at that meeting as well yeah so Peter, if you could take care of that posting for yep. us. Yep. So thank you. And that's all my questions and comments on budget. Anybody else? I don't have any at this time. I looked at the Excel. Um, I think I made it up to line 423 in the tab. So yeah. So typically I, I look more at the summary level just because so much changes in the last two months. Um, especially when you start bringing the departments in, they just mm -hmm. things change quite a bit. So at the yeah. summary level, it's a good start. Um, work to be done, but again, a lot of work will be done over the next month and a half or so. Yep. So I use the budget history summary, which does list out all of the line items by department, but it's in you know on seven pages instead of each of the individual tabs. Right. It just summarizes that. So okay. that's what I work with, and then I work with basically the uh, various pages of the budget recapitulation or the summary that gets you to the you know the net number um, there's a cherry sheet thing which you know i think there might be opportunity there as the state moves forward um, local receipts there's some opportunity and some you know exposure um, but that's listed there there's a bit of other financing sources not, not much but basically it outlines you know, uh, septic title five, how that's treated. Uh, there's the taxation summary, which just does the proposition two and a half calculation, basically. It says we have 140 grand to play with to cover the nut if we were to cover the whole nut. 
um, and some other other items. So those are the basic ones. That's my sort of walking package with notes, mm -hmm. as well as the Excel model itself. All right. Any other questions, comments on budget? All right. Next item, annual town uh, meeting warrant draft. Yeah, so what I put together there is basically what I know as of, you know, the latest date of things that will likely be in there, which are the standard items you see, you know, the first few pages of articles one through six are always in the annual town meeting. Um, seven has a placeholder in case the union contract with the police is uh, rat needs ratification. Uh, then the capital items that uh, uh, have been voted on, and I even included one that looks like it's going to go away, so we won't need that. The, the sweeper, street sweeper, that goes away, but I, at the time of this printing, I had included that. Mm -hmm. um, BMR is going to be providing an article and listed in Article 13 in this draft for uh, school committee stipends, you know, just to conform with what the other town does and what they think um, is required, which somehow slipped through the cracks over the years. Um, there's one that um, is in there for the town bylaw elections that the chair had suggested putting back in. You know, the clerk and I put that forward. I think it was a town, a fall town meeting in 19 that didn't quite cut the mustard, but had, had that been approved then, we might be having a different conversation for the, the folks that are going to come on board you know, and have to take ownership of all of this budget and right. so forth. And, so. I, and I asked Peter to put that one on there. Obviously, once this is finalized, it can be on there or not. But it seemed to make sense as we now are in budget discussions, getting ready to look at budgets, and then we have a change of leadership that's going to happen. Um, so my recommendation was to put this on there, let the townspeople decide. It makes sense to have um, the elections after you approve budgets, after you approve town meetings, um, because we are the people that have been here all year long discussing it, going through it. So it seems to make sense to have the elections after everything's approved and gone through. So putting it on there, we'll let the townspeople decide as to whether or not it makes sense for them. Yep. Well, I, don't, uh, I had a question on, on that one and an, another one. Um, so, cause I think we had this on before and Jane Reggio mentioned that Someone, I don't know if it's us or Blackstone, has a special rule. Yeah, so they have a charter. So they're under a charter. So mm -hmm. to change the charter for changing, this is not asking to change the election of the school committee. It's this is exception. asking only to change non school committee elections, which okay. then raises the question what would it cost to have a school separate school committee yeah. election, right? Right. Which you could argue the burden would go to the BMR for that. Uh, the, the clerk estimates it's about 3,200 bucks, I think is what I last saw for the cost of manning an election and, you know, renting the equipment and, uh, cleaning the church hall and whatnot. So there's, there, there is a modest cost, uh, to having a separate election for, um, the, the school committee. Yeah. I also had asked Diane about this question as well. Mm -hmm. Um, when I asked to put this on here and I know, um, um, Blackstone had talked about it in the past, and I know the school committee themselves had talked about changing their election because they wanted it later as well. So maybe this is something that may have something that other people will follow suit, but it's, at least it's on there. We can discuss it at town meeting and the mm -hmm. townspeople can decide if it makes sense or not. I just wanted a placeholder on there for discussion purposes. Right, and as you may recall, mm -hmm. in the earlier stages of the regional agreement negotiation, you know, uh, amendment committee uh, recommendations early on, they recommended that even though the elections were remained fixed as the first uh, Monday in April, but that the committee had no uh, voting rights until July 1st or some such thing. I mean, they, right. they were effectively doing this, but still stay within the charter restrictions of the town of uh, Blackstone. Um, so, so they were amenable to the concept. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, a form of getting there, not substance. Right. Again, I think it's one of those things that needs to be talked about, needs to be decided upon with the town. And 
maybe it would even change the um, school committee's date as well as Blackstone because I know that they're in the same boat that we are. So at least we have it on there as a placeholder for discussion. Right. That makes sense. Um, and then the other question I had, uh, Peter, was Article 9. So the police car, because that went 3-3 three, three by the um, Capital Planning Committee. And so I know the board of selectmen, we would have to vote to put that on there. So that would yeah, also. So that's, so that's more, uh, it's a placeholder. It's for discussion. Mm -hmm. Clearly, Capital Program Committee did, in fact, do that 3-3. Three, three, so it's a little. It's unclear whether that goes on or not, but again, you're in the board of selectmen makes the final okay. sounds good. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I put a placeholder for zoning bylaws to the extent there were any recommended changes. I'm not aware of any. I, I put a placeholder for cable appropriations because the town accountant has his knickers in a twist about something there, but I don't fully understand it. So I'm hoping that he'll. Um, provide the right wording uh, reviewed by council that we might need there. Separately, I have uh, to be determined whether there'll be anything for funding OPEB's capital stabilization, general stabilization. Okay. okay. And I know of no others, nobody's put forth anything specific from, um, you know, but the warrant remains open, so. Did you give a deadline for that, Peter? I can't remember. You know, I did, for them to return me back. No, I think I said uh, deadline will be forthcoming. You know. Okay. So, okay. So it's still a little a a ambiguous enough to be somebody could make the argument if they yeah. weren't loud enough. Okay. Any other discussion on the warrant? <clears throat> Next item: um, 2019 final audit report. Peter sent along to us to review. Now that made for exciting reading, I hope for all of you. I did skim through it actually. I um, read it. I just, yeah, so I just want to say thank you, Peter, for pointing out and making sure there were some comments in there for OPEB. Yes. That OPEB liability has me very concerned. Um, the deficit on that is mounting and we really, really need to start considering um, funding that a little more appropriately. And that's my comment on, on uh, audit. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the uh, page fifty eight. They call it mm -hmm. subsequent events, where and I drafted that that part of that um, footnote regarding BMR's uh, outstanding unfunded liabilities of regular debts three million, uh, unfunded OPEBs as of June thirtieth, nineteen thirty three million. Um, unfunded pension obligation at BMR for the non-teachers is 8 million. And I always find it very interesting, and that's why I included this language that the auditors uh, provide the numbers for, the unfunded pension obligation on behalf of BMR teachers, but it's at the state. It doesn't come out of your, you know, your property tax pocket. It comes out of your sales tax and your state income tax pocket. Uh, but in any event, that's a $39 million unfunded nut as of June 30th, 19. And the state made a contribution on behalf of those teachers of nearly $4 million. So those are big numbers of debt that this little community, these two communities have created that, you know, somebody has to pay at some point. So it's always one of my hot buttons. Um, Do we know how other communities handle this? So, I mean, certainly those numbers are big and we should have it funded better than we do. But I'm wondering, are other communities looking like Millville or are other communities so this is, funded? You know, or? Yeah. So again, this is BMR. This isn't Millville specific. If Millville right, so specific, our uh, OPEB liability is about 600,000. Right now mm -hmm. the town's got 140 grand put away. So compared to some other communities, that's pretty reasonably, uh, you know, that's a reasonable coverage of that. Um, I think the reality is BMR, you know, is challenged for this. They're putting in, um, not in the budget this year, but to be paid out of their E&D, which is the equivalent of our free cash, uh, $50,000 as a contribution. So they finally a little tasted a little blood. They're actually doing something about it. In reality, that liability they have increases by fifty thousand every two weeks, so uh, yeah. it's not, you know, it 
it wouldn't satisfy me if I were the one being satisfied on that. This would have been a great year for BMR to plump that up a bit since their budget came in lower yeah. than expected or, or asked. So this would have been a great year for them to kind of plump up that line a little bit. But right. we'll see. We'll see what the budget brings. Yeah. So other towns are struggling. You know, the the, the larger communities, uh, you know, the cities and all that do a lousy job of funding their OPEBs. Um, some communities, like even Blackstone, from talking to Keys before he left, I mean, he's pretty well funded on his OPEBs. He's he's way ahead of the curve compared to many other communities. Um, I had a friend who, uh, a former colleague who uh, was the executive director in Wellesley, and I grew up in Wellesley, so I pay attention to it. Um, he, he was big on this because he came from the same kind of training that I do. And uh, so he got theirs fully funded 10 years ago. Wow. So they were, he was way ahead of the curve, but they were putting 3 million bucks away every year to do that. It's real money. Yeah, I think real it's fun. important to note that Blackstone, you know, has their power plant. That's right. They, they have that money and they have the highest tax rate in the valley. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> I guess I should have asked the question a little differently. Are other school systems or school districts have similar obligations or are we an anomaly? I guess I'm just wondering how much of an outlier we are. Not that I don't think we should, you know, I do think we should be trying to reduce the summer and things like that. But I'm wondering if we're kind of cruising along with the crowd and everyone's doing this. Yeah, I, I would let them speak to that. I know that okay. my Sherburne residency days and activities, uh, Dover Sherburne was also very remiss in their OPEB funding. Okay. I don't know what they're like these days, but they certainly were. Okay. Um, so on these financials, just I'll point out a couple of things. If you looked at the actual statements, page 13 is really the gap equivalent mm -hmm. where it's trying to do a cruel basis accounting of your balance sheet, which factors in your assets, your fixed assets, you know, land, buildings, equipment, and depreciates it. And it also shows your liabilities uh, like your OPEBs, like your town's unfunded pensions, like uh, one of the other ones that stood out is your... Uh, your uh, what is it the landfill closure post closure care costs so your landfill they've accrued 330 grand there as what the obligation of the town is over the next 15 or 20 years to continue to monitor te and test the capped landfill uh, behind the salt chip so you know there's that's a cruel basis and mm -hmm. then on page 16 is really the government or the fund accounting. That's what Millville daily books would show. And it shows your general account, your title five uh, separate accounts and today's numbers instead of 653 is fund balance. It's uh, 718 as of June 30th, uh, 2020. So that keeps going up. Uh, has a bunch of other funds sort of combined together. Um, noteworthy is, of course, the cash number um, of 3.7 million bucks as of June 30th, 2019. You know, a million three of that is the Title V and the, uh, you, you know, the uh, uh, non-operating funds. The balance is uh, the cash and short-term investments, which includes, you know, at that point you had your uh, stabilization funds and your OPEB funds. So that you know, there's a million bucks of that is really not liquid, if you will. And then the balance of a million plus, you can, we can burn that up in a check, uh, you know, a bill, an invoice from BMR is, you know, bordering on 700 grand. So, you know, writing that check takes that balance down pretty quickly. So it sounds like a lot of cash. Some of it's segregated. I am trying to get the Title V stuff freed up. Uh, still working with uh, DLS on that, um, which may give us favorable news on um, free cash as well. Um, but more to follow, more to be determined. So, Peter, on the free cash, I know you've been going back and forth with that discrepancy. Is that something that you think is going to be 
settled before budgets or yeah. and or town meeting? Yeah, I think it'll be, we'll know, we'll have some certainty. Um, and actually, I'm going to push for that because to the extent that they don't decide that it's transferable to a free cash equivalent, mm -hmm. then my plan B is to do some sort of uh, uh, Warren article to move the, what I call the excess monies that have, some portion of the excess monies accumulated to stabilization by way of yeah. a Warren article. And there's a plan C and maybe a plan D as well, yet to be right. sort of fleshed out. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be a, an important target to watch. Yes, oh yeah, it's very important. So mm -hmm. it's in the hands, uh, been run up the flagpole and is now with uh, Andrew Nelson, you know, who's the regional lead of DLS for Millville. Um, right. He's, you know, I think probably looking back at some prior years information from which to make a more definitive decision on things. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and so the last thing is page 20 shows your budget to actuals, which shows that really gives you a good sense of how typical free cash is created. It's created by way of your revenues come in better than you anticipated in your, your annual budgeting modeling, as well as your expenditures have turn backs in various line items and net net in this particular case of that fiscal year before our land sales, you operating uh, free cash generation, if you will, or operating surplus was 143,000 mm bucks. -hmm. So I'm just trying to give you, you know, sort of a highlights of the things that are important. There's a lot of words that, you know, for folks, that it's on the, it's on the town website. People want to read it. There's, it leads in with management discussion and analysis, which tries to, you know, I find confusing to read, but it tries to make sense of what you're about to read. And yeah. then you read it, you look at those statements and you scratch your head, which one is that, which one, you know? Um, and then you get into the footnotes, which are where the real good stuff is in terms of trying to understand how things are, you know, how the things are accounted for by the town and the various statements. So, and then at the end, they have some, uh, some of the town's OPEB stuff uh, and pension information that's in schedules that are unaudited, but uh, do provide some good information. So yeah. anyway. And like you said, it is on the website and people may think we have a ton of money in the bank when they look at the balance sheet, but right. just keep in, in mind the balance sheet's just a snapshot. It's like taking a picture right. of your checking account on a Friday when you get paid, but the bills haven't posted yet. So just keep right. in mind. <laughs> that's right. So. Any other discussion or questions on audit? I've got a couple questions. So mm -hmm. on page 43, note seven, short-term financing. So it said we have no short-term debt activity for the year June 30th, 2019, but have we ever used that in the past? I don't know, like bond anticipation notes and things. So if we were to go out, so let's say the town borrowed money to build a town hall or a deep, you know, the garage, for example. And we went, we got approval to do long-term fi debt financing, you know, and and decided to do bond anticipation notes, short-term debt before uh, going out to actually bonding it. And, uh, you know, the treasurer presumably would be a better expert on the process, but, um, you know, some communities like in, I live in, Situate and Situate always seems to have ten million dollars of bond anticipation notes, and so all the town's doing is paying the interest on that. So in my mind, it's really cheating. It's not showing the true debt service cost that should be budgeted, and so they should be bundling their bond anticipation notes and actually going to bond, long-term bond, and then paying the debt service down over 15, 20, 30 years, whatever it may be. Uh, Stitch point we, probably has that an actual bond rating, unlike Millville. So that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> so. so what what you don't see, like in our operating budget, is any uh, debt service for the um, the uh, new boiler at BMR. You know that won't hit, I think, until twenty three. That will all of a sudden we'll have a bump in the uh -huh. debt service budget line item because we'll have, be having to pay debt service down on that. Okay. okay. Um, and then my last comment was, I, there's a typo at the bottom of page six. 
So I was reading this, so it's the very last sentence. It says, non-current liabilities within the governmental activities include $370,594 million. So I was guessing it wasn't $370 million because that would that would be very scary for Mildo. That's, you're right, there's a good typo, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yep. I see that. Good one. We can have Bob Brown come in and walk through if you want to have a, you know, the board, maybe the next board. It would be nice to do that with the, the finance auditor. committee. Yeah, I think. That. Yeah, so uh, he's he's ready, willing and able to come in and talk about this in greater detail to the as in as much detail as anybody wants. Peter, they had always come in to do a presentation. And I've never gotten an audit without a presentation. So that may be useful to have. And I think that does clarify things for the layman who's at home, who might have read it, but don't know all the ins and outs and hearing it from the professionals might be good. Right, I agree. So it's good that it's on the website now, maybe scheduling a meeting, give people a chance in the town to read it having a public forum for questions. I think that's probably a great idea considering some transparency issues we may have had in the past. Right. And they have yet to issue their uh, management letter. I mm -hmm. uh, haven't seen a draft yet. Um, so I think once they do that, then they would be, that would be the time to bring them in to talk through right. this as well as the management letter. So you really got this hot off the presses and we put it right up on the website once they issued the electronic version of this. Right, good. Anything else on audit from anyone? All right, next item, we have a resignation. Um, Mary Govin from the Historical Commission. I don't, um, I didn't see anything official in our packet. Do we have anything official? Uh, in the Diane packet? has it too. Yeah, so okay. she has that. Yeah, I don't know that I have her little piece of paper. She does. Yeah. All right. Is the resignation immediate? Do we have a date on that? Or uh, in fact, it came from Diane uh, March oh, 10th. I see it. So. You know what? I'm lying. I see yeah. it. It was it yeah. was it was cop it was with some other stuff. Yeah. I just found it. Yeah. Um, so we're looking March for a 10. motion for me. Yeah. yeah. For Mary Govin um to resign from the historical commission effective immediately. Um it's an unexpired three-year term with a vacancy expiration of June 30th, 2022. Looking for a motion. Um, I'll make a motion that we accept the resignation of Mary Govin from the historical commission which leaves a vacancy with an expiration date of June 30th, 2020. And I'll second that with regret because she's been on there for a, a while and I appreciate her service. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your service, Mary. Next um, item is appointment of Diane Hadley to the Historical Commission. Looking for a motion. I will make a motion to appoint Diane Hadley to the Historical Commission for a term that expires on June 30th, 2022. Looking for a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Welcome aboard, Diane. <clears throat> Do we have any old business? No. Kind of bundled in the new. Okay. Um, Alex, do we have anybody on for public forum? No public forum comments at the moment. Okay. So now we'll go to Selectman's reports. Anybody have anything? <clears throat> okay. The only thing I have, um, I asked Andrew to have all of the executive session meeting minutes ready for us for tonight's meeting. Um, I have not received them as of yet. So I think we're gonna have to schedule one more meeting of this board 
as an executive session um, to review and sign off on those meetings before the board changes. At the end of this meeting, we will um, make a date for that. Um, town administrator report. No, I, you know, I covered most everything that I wanted to cover. Okay. In the body. So I assume you don't have any other items, 48 nope. hour items? Nope. So the next regular scheduled meeting will be Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Peter's going to have a meeting posted for March 24th in conjunction with FinCom in case there is a uh, quorum. Um, and actually, why don't we pick our executive session meeting date now to do the meeting minutes since we don't have them as of yet. So I guess March 31st, there's a capital planning committee meeting. Okay. So I don't know if you want to avoid that date, but other than that. Yeah. And so, I don't think I can, you go, I don't think I need to be available anyway, because I can't vote on any of these Yeah, that's true. Um, so I think you're either the 22nd or the 29th. So why don't we say the 29th, that'll give Andrew an extra week to write them if he needs to, the 29th at 7 p.m. Um, and I will reach out to him to let him know to make sure it's a, if he's good with that meeting night. Um, what time is that? 7 p.m. Is that good with you, Alex? That works. Okay, thank you. Is that a Monday? It is. Is that okay? Yeah, no, it's fine. I just, I can't pull up my calendar for some reason. Oh, okay. Two weeks from today. Thank so you. We'll do that. Just an executive session. We'll book that one for. And select McGill, you're optional on that one since you won't be able to vote on anything. So we might give you the night off unless you want to come and hang out. I have nothing else to do, which might be true. Yep. So. And that's for BOS? Yes. Actually, um, well, we have any, we'll have other meeting minutes to sign. So maybe yeah. we'll do an open meeting for the remaining meeting minutes of the Board of Selectmen. Then we'll go into executive session. I'm making this complicated now to sign off all of executive <laughs> session meeting minutes. I well, just, we'll, have just, to, we'll have to start an open forum regardless. So Right, right, right. So okay. I just want yeah. that on the agenda. So we'll have tonight's minutes. minutes and March 1st minutes available. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. I just can't give up this spot. You know, I just want to keep meeting with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right in. <clears throat> right in. Right in. <laughs> you know, you didn't pay for that spot, by the way. <laughs> yeah. All right. all right. So I think that's all we had before we enter an executive session. So if anybody. Did you wants do the to... public forum? Did you? Did I miss We that? did. Nobody was here to listen to us. Anybody yeah, there yet, okay. Alex? Sometimes you give them a little. I'll refresh, but I don't think so. No, no kidding. Nope. Nope. I gotta go have birthday cake with my son. Can you tell him? Oh, you gotta to go. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be brief when we get into executive session. That's fine. That's fine. No rush. One last question again would be April sixth. What time and what which uh seven PM meeting was usually. That? So that'll be the board of selectmen. It'll be a new board of selectmen on uh on April sixth. We'll have it at seven PM unless uh otherwise noted alex and uh, i will lead off the meeting and then the first item will be for the new board to reconfigure itself and they'll elect a chair and a secretary and a you know vice chair and that sort of thing all right at least that's how i anticipate it will go and we'll probably have the same very similar, you know, Warren article budget types of items on the agenda. And so I will remind the election winners, the elections on Monday, first meetings on Tuesday, you need to get sworn in before the meeting so you can right. vote on items. So plan accordingly with Diane to get sworn in immediately. Yep. Good stuff. Okay. So would anybody like to, um, unless Alex, you have anything else tonight? You're chatty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I have no, no more questions. All right. We're going to let you go in a minute. Once we do our last little thing here, um, I'm looking for a motion to go into an executive session. We'll only need to read uh, the first one because we're not going to be doing B. 
So looking for 14A, please. I will move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session per Massachusetts General Law C30A 21A3, discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Teamsters Union Local 170, Town of Millville Police Officers. Looking for a second. Second. Okay. Roll. Jennifer Gill. Jennifer Wang, aye. Erica Blake, aye. All right, Alex, you can hand the reins over to me. We'll stop recording and you can uh, have the rest of the evening to yourself, sir. Thank you very much.